Ukrainian naval drones and missiles destroyed 28 Russian ships and one submarine in the Black Sea. A full-scale war is ongoing in Ukraine and the Ukrainians managed to perform an incredible feat. They unexpectedly won the Battle of the Black Sea and this may become a landmark achievement in the annals of naval warfare. The Ukrainian side, not having its own navy, disabled at least a third of the Russian Black Sea fleet broke the Russian naval blockade and reopened the Black Sea for grain exports, according to the Washington Post. Now Ukraine's export volumes are approaching pre-war levels, which has become a huge help for its wartime economy, the material emphasizes. According to journalists, the Ukrainians managed to accomplish such an incredible feat, partly thanks to the use of powerful anti-ship cruise missiles, including the domestically produced Neptune, thanks to which the flagship of the Russian Black Sea fleet, the missile cruiser Moskva, was sunk in 2022. But Ukraine has also innovated brilliantly, developing its own unmanned surface vessels that can hunt Russian warships in wolf packs. Both the Magura V5 and Sea Baby are essentially unmanned speedboats that can be loaded with explosives and even fire missiles. The article notes, the seaborne drones are equipped with cameras and satellite communications to allow remote controllers to guide them to targets are fast and are made from materials that are difficult to detect by radar, the journalists added. The most important thing is that they are cheap to produce and do not put Ukrainian personnel at risk. Drones costing just a few hundred thousand dollars are sinking multi-million dollar warships that take years to produce, the article says. Retired American Admiral and former NATO commander James Stavridis believes that we are at an absolute turning point in naval warfare. Large surface ships are at great risk from airborne surface and underwater drones, he said. According to the former commander of the alliance, the sooner large countries such as the United States understand this, the more likely they are to survive major combat operations in this turbulent 21st century. Like a number of battleships destroyed at Pearl Harbor, aircraft carriers are in the twilight of their days. The time has come to shift the procurement dial from manned warships to more numerous and much less expensive unmanned ships, says Stavridis. In mid-June, British Foreign Secretary David Cameron said that the Ukrainians managed to sink 25% of the Russian Black Sea Fleet. According to information from the General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine, published on June the 17th, Russia's total naval losses are as follows. 28 ships stroke boats and one submarine were destroyed. Armed forces of Ukraine trapped hundreds of Russians in Kharkiv. Now they are surrendering en masse. Ukrainian troops have trapped up to 400 Russians in a chemical plant in the center of Volchansk. And according to the Ukrainian Center for Defense Strategies, 30 Russians have already surrendered after repeated attempts to rescue them failed. According to Forbes, over several weeks of fierce fighting, units of several Ukrainian brigades blocked the Russian offensive north of the Volchia River. At the same time, Russian forces equivalent to at least two battalions with hundreds of infantrymen stormed the Volchansk chemical plant PJSC on the right bank of the river. Apparently, the Russian plan was to seize the chemical plant and then from there launch an operation to cross the river to break into southern Volchansk. The plan failed when Ukrainian troops, possibly from the 9th Rifle Brigade, the Russian Volunteer Corps or the 36th Marine Brigade, attacked west of the chemical plant and advanced several blocks north, cutting off the Russians at the plant from their comrades or on west, writes Forbes. Ukrainian fighters noted that the Russians were surrounded with no chance of evacuation or reinforcements and reported a bunch of dead and wounded orcs. Russian commanders this weekend ordered their troops west of the chemical plant to break through Ukrainian positions. However, two attempts to break through to the encircled Russian troops were repulsed by Ukrainian Defense Forces, the Center for Defense Strategies reports. Obviously, it was then that the surrounded Russians began to surrender en masse. Although Russian and Ukrainian troops regularly capture each other, they rarely do so in dozens. The largest number of prisoners, as a rule, happens during the siege of large cities and chaotic hasty retreats. 
Forbes noted, thus hundreds of Ukrainian soldiers surrendered after holding out for several weeks in the encircled Mariupol. In mid-February 2024, the Russians captured dozens of Ukrainians as they retreated from the ruins of Avdiivka in eastern Ukraine. The fact that so many Russians surrendered at the same time in Volchansk, a city that neither side fully controls and which remains the subject of disputes, should have scared the Russian command. The Russian army should not have been bogged down in Volchansk, and it certainly should not have lost dozens of soldiers in an unsuccessful attempt to seize a bridgehead for a further attempt to cross the narrow river in the middle of the city, the article says. Whatever the Russians' goals were when they crossed the border into northern Ukraine last month, they not only failed to achieve them, their prospects for success are increasingly remote, the newspaper emphasizes.